we now have this function, we want to do calculus on it. So how do we differentiate exponentials? Let's go back to first principles. It's where we start and try and create some sort of formula. a to the power of x, so the base could be anything. That's going to be function x, therefore function x plus h would be a to the power of x plus h. Put it into our first principles formula and we get this. The limit as h approaches zero, a to the power of x plus h minus a to the power of x all over h. Got a problem. Okay. I'm going to play around with this a bit. If I factorise a to the power of x, I can do that to the top there, and I'm left with a to the power of h minus 1 over h. Well, I can really factorise the a to the x outside the limit because there's no h there. So it doesn't get affected by the h approaching 0. That leaves me with this interesting limit. The h approaches 0 of a to the power of h minus 1 over h. How do I resolve this problem? I do something a little bit tricky. I rewrite it. a to the power of h I'm going to rewrite as a to the power of 0 plus h. And 1 I'm going to rewrite as a to the power of 0. Hmm, why do that? Because what I've now created is function 0 plus h minus function 0. Well that is the derivative at the point x equals 0. Because our first principle formula is function x plus h minus function x. So I'm saying, well, this will be the one for the specific situation where x equals 0. So it's the slope of the tangent at x equals 0. So if I want to differentiate a to the power of x, then I know the derivative is going to be m, the slope, times a to the power of x. And m represents the slope of the tangent at x equals 0. Now I'm going to introduce this idea. Euler's number, which is e. It's an irrational number, just like pi goes on forever, it never repeats. Its actual definition is this. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n all to the power of n. So as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that limit will get closer and closer to the exact value of e. You go to your calculator, it's about this. So 2.71828.1828. Looks like it is repeating, but that's just because of the limit of the screen of your calculator. If you had more decimal places, it would go out of that pattern pretty quickly. Now, the thing about the exponential function, why is this so important? You see, the function where the base is e, we know has a slope of 1 at x equals 0. We know this to be true. So therefore, this particular exponential becomes the easiest derivative of them all. Because if function x is e to the power of x, and if f dash 0 is equal to 1, because we're saying the slope's going to be 1, then the derivative is also e to the x, because we said it was the slope times that particular thing. Differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x. What that basically means is, for an exponential function, where the base is e, the slope is going to be equal to the height of the curve okay? because the derivative is always equal to the y value. So at any particular x value on our exponential curve, the slope of the tangent at that point is the same as the y value. And that's why the exponential gets steeper and steeper and steeper because as the y values go up, the curve gets steeper and it keeps going. So we had to find e cubed. Well, fortunately, we've got a calculator we can do that with. Plug it in the calculator, we should end up with something like 20.0. 8, 6. Now what about if I had to draw? So 5 minus e to the minus x starts with our basic curve, e to the power of x. Now e is a number that's bigger than 1, so we have one of these exponentials. So that's the basic one. What have we done to it? Minus x. Well that means we reflect in the y-axis. So now we look like that, the backwards exponential. What else have we done? Hang on, it's negative. So now we reflect in the x-axis, we're down there. So that's minus e to the minus x. And then finally, we shift the whole thing up 5, and there is our final picture. That would be 5 minus e to the minus x. And that will do us for today.